Dicks. Have you ever passed a funeral procession while driving? And if so, have you ever overtaken one? Because I just did recently, and quite frankly, I would recommend it. Feels pretty good. I like to think I put a decent amount of effort into earning a fast pass to hell, and if disrespecting the superstitions of others in relation to the deceased doesn't get me a one-way ticket, I'm not sure how much harder I can try. Do I have to kick a baby? Because bring in a baby. I told a couple of my friends and my grandparents that I did this, and they all seemed pretty appalled by my total lack of appreciation for the grieving, but while I was doing it, I saw something even more shocking. See, as I was committing this atrocity that is staying on schedule despite the inevitable death of another human being in my general area, I happened to glance into the windows of the grief train beside me, and amongst many angry glares were a couple people who were driving and crying simultaneously. Now, is it just me, or does that seem just a little- actually, you know what? Fuck it. It's a lot dangerous. Alright, I get that you're sad because, for some reason, you still have some kind of attachment to what this now empty vessel of meat and bones once represented to you, but that doesn't give you a free pass to operate a motor vehicle while at the same time sobbing like an insane person. One woman was actually wiping tears from both eyes, like if it's not bad enough that water is currently obscuring your view of what's around you, you are now also blocking the two most important organs that your body uses to prevent you from killing everything in every direction with your two-ton skeleton bus. It wouldn't be so bad if you could still be a competent driver, but it obviously causes some discrepancy between fiction and reality, because if anyone in this conga line of sadness could properly see, they'd realize that driving at 4 kilometers per hour is detrimental to everyone who has no reason to care about the corpse they feel the need to traffic from one expensive place to another. And now you're holding up my entire day because everyone in front of and beside me won't move for fear that old dead uncle fuck is going to arthritically shamble his melting ghost face into their dreams at night, asking them questions about why they didn't stop their entire lives in order to pay respect to him for forgetting to wear his life alert bracelet last week. And I'm stuck here anxiously waiting for an opening so that I can blow past this shriveled, sunken group of people who don't know how to let go of a thing once it stops working so that I can get home and tend to my more important appointments like Google searching pictures of any animal with an unnatural testicle to dick ratio. If we slowed down to recognize every person who dies, nothing would get done and we'd all be standing still forever. Jay, you're walking so slowly. Oh, pardon me. I just don't feel right moving at normal speed when someone in Mexico just got struck by an overturned septic truck and drowned on the sidewalk in the ensuing tsunami of shit. Not to mention if I was a hearse driver transporting a decaying blob in a wooden box, I'd be speeding like a banshee because having a dead body congeal in the back of your car is just fucking creepy. The coffin lid opens by itself and suddenly you're in an episode of Tales from the Crypt Keeper. So as someone totally unaffiliated with all that, I want to get as far away from them as possible because you know the driver's going to start swerving the second that cold bony hand wraps around his throat. That whole experience felt like the establishing scene to every Romero movie ever. I'm driving home in the morning when suddenly I'm sideswiped by a hearse and a zombie flies out the back door attaching itself to my windshield trying to pry through the glass to get to my face flesh while I'm flipping into oncoming traffic and then I die upside down in a mushroom cloud. I have no problem with being a jerk as long as it gets me as far away from the recently deceased as possible because if zombie films have taught me anything it's that those are the ones that are the most dangerous during the initial outbreak. The point I'm trying to make is I'm not the kind of person who thinks it's necessary to waste my time honoring the dead. And, if you and 10 other cars are driving half the speed limit on the way to the cemetery, you can bet I'm going to be practicing my Fast and the Furious drifting around you. 